Support for this episode is provided by burns Find your fire at burns This week I made a few sculpture bases for my friend Judy Tabak, who's a ceramic artist. I also shot a studio visit with Judy, and it was a lot of fun to see her process and see her studio, so I hope you'll check that out. I'll have a link in the description. This is kind of a, an introduction to woodworking, using primarily just a, an angle grinder and some sanders, so I'll try to cover all the basics. Okay, I'm set up outside because I'm going to make some dust. I've got a rug remnant here, or a carpet remnant, eye protection, ear protection, lung protection. This is an angle grinder. You can get these from anywhere from maybe $60 to $160, depending on the model you get. It's set up with 36 grit coarse sandpaper. The lower the number of your sandpaper, the more coarse it is. The more coarse it is, the more material you'll remove. This is the block of walnut wood. I'm not going to worry about the fact that it has this sort of uneven break in it. I'll let that become part of the shape when I start to power carve. All right, so I'm pretty happy with the way this turn is turning out. It's a little more interesting than just a block of wood. Instead of having a 90 degree angle here, I'm going to try to make that about a five degree angle. So I've used a pencil line as a reference mark. And again, I'll use the grinder to try to go from zero to this line. And I'll do the same thing right here. I want to dish this area out more just to kind of create this wave in here. And so I'll use some pencil lines and sand all of them away and that should get me close. I finished up with the grinder and now I'm going to move on to an orbital sander. This machine costs somewhere between $50 and maybe $70. I'm using 80 grit sandpaper and that should remove the majority of the deep scratches. After sanding the walnut base I moved on to the second base and this one's made out of white oak. White oak is definitely one of my favorite woods. It has a really nice kind of a honey color and often a really beautiful grain. After shaping the wood with the grinder, I, I again moved on to the orbital sander with the 80 grit sandpaper. And once that was finished, then I used a palm sander. This is uh, another pretty inexpensive machine, maybe about $50. And for this machine, I generally use about 120 grit sandpaper or 150 grit sandpaper. If you don't have a palm sander and you don't want to go out and buy another sanding machine, you can also do this part of the sanding by hand. I'm using a drill press to drill a hole in the bases, and the nice thing about a drill press is it drills a perfectly straight hole. This is an old Delta drill press, and I believe it was somewhere around $180, maybe $200. It's definitely not the best drill press, but for the most part, it gets the job done. A simple finish is spray lacquer and the nice thing about spray lacquer is it dries really fast and I usually go with about three coats sanding lightly in between coats with 220 sandpaper. The sculptures are going to rest on a half inch steel rod and one of my favorite finishes for steel is beeswax. I'll heat up the rod with a torch. This is the TS-8000. It's the Burns-O-Matic torch. And one of the things I really like about it is 
you press the button and you've got fire. So I'll heat up the rod and melt the wax. To cut the metal rod to size, again, I'm using an angle grinder. Only this one is set up with a metal cutoff wheel. Now I could also use the metal cutoff wheel in the grinder that I had been using to shape the bases, but I've got a few different grinders and I've set up all of the grinders with different attachments just to save time. In short, you really only need one grinder to get started. All right, well definitely pretty simple, just a simple shape, but I think effective. I think you wouldn't want to be too decorative on the base. And I am going to bring these over to Judy's and we'll see what they, uh, see what the sculptures look like on the base. And I did make these with the idea in mind that if Judy likes these, then she can make them herself. And I'll probably just give her the scrap wood. I mean, as a woodworker, I always end up with little pieces like this where there's not much to do with it. And that brings me to the other question you might have. Where do you find wood like this if you want to just make bases? Uh, you could probably find a woodworker or uh, you could also just go and buy a board. Now you're not going to get a board like this from uh, Home Depot or Lowe's. You'll have to go to a decent uh, lumber, uh, lumber shop, is that what they call them? Not a lumber mill. Uh, anyway, the one that I go to here in New Jersey is called Monteith Lumber. And as far as cutting the wood, you could just cut the wood with a, a circular saw like this right here, especially if you're not too worried about the shape, if you're going to let the shape be a little freeform, well then you can cut your board and then just go at it with the grinder until you get something that you like. I hope you enjoyed this video and again as a reminder I hope that you'll definitely uh, check out the Two River TV episode with the studio visit uh, with Judy Tavel. I thought it was a lot of fun and a lot of interesting things. So. As always, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Hey, I'm back, and I thought I should just mention that if this seems like something that you might get into, definitely check out another video I made that covers some of the basics of an angle grinder. An angle grinder is an incredibly versatile tool. And in that video, I show some of the different attachments that you can use for some different materials. So definitely check that out. I'll have a link in the description.